is part of Israel yours? I would say yes. And this week's Torah portion, Chaye Sarah, the life of Sarah, which can be seen more so as the legacy of Sarah, can be seen as telling us so. In this Shabbat's Torah reading of Chaye Sarah, we read of the first and rather significant real estate transaction in the land of Israel. Abraham purchases in Hebron the cave of Machpelah and surrounding field. Just 60 years before, God had told Abraham, Ki el kol haaretz asher ata ro'eh, for all the land that you see. Lecha et nena ulzaracha ad olam. I will give it to you and to your descendants forever. But this was a promise concerning the future. The land here was not yet ours, it was not yet his. And Abraham even took care not to allow his sheep to graze on Canaanite property, which, by the way, may be seen as the cause of the split between Abraham and his nephew, Lot. The first part of the land of Israel to belong to the Jewish people in the actual and legal sense is here in this Shabbat's reading of Chaye Sarah, the cave of Machpelah and surrounding field in the heart of Hebron, which Abraham purchased from Ephron the Hittite. There are actually three parts of Israel over which the Jewish right of ownership is most powerfully established. Beyond the divine promise just quoted and reiterated by God numerous times throughout the Torah, there are three key Jewish real estate transactions so notable in our biblical history in Israel. Not in order here, but these Three key transactions are King David's having purchased the Temple Mount in Jerusalem from Aravna the Jebusite. Yaakov's having purchased the section of Shechem from the family of the Canaanite ruler Amor. And here now, Abraham's having purchased the cave and field of Machpelah in Hebron from Ephron the Hittite. This latter transaction from this week's Torah reading of Chaye Sarah notes, And Abraham weighed to Ephron the silver which he had named, in the hearing of the sons of Heth, four hundred shekels of silver in negotiable currency. Then Abraham buried Sarah his wife in the cave of the field of Machpelah, before Mamre, that is Hebron, and the land of Canaan. This transaction is publicly noted with witnesses hearing it, for it not to be later questioned. This parsha recounts the Ephron Abraham sale in great detail, including the sum of the purchase price of 400 silver shekels. Based on this figure, Rabbi Yitzchak Bar Yehuda Halevi, who lived in the second half of the 13th century, made a rather interesting and relevant calculation. As per Vayikra, the value of land in these biblical times was 50 silver shekels for a big core, or 75,000 square amot cubits. Thus, the area purchased by Abraham was eight Beykor, or 600,000 square cubits. A square cubit is the approximate area of an upright human being. Rather interestingly, correspondingly, the generation of Jews who left Egypt and received the Torah at Mount Sinai numbered some 600,000 heads of households. 
our sages tell us that the Jewish nation consists of but 600,000 souls. And that the soul of every Jew who ever lived is an offshoot of one of these 600,000 general souls. Furthermore, the Torah is said to contain 600,000 letters, including the spaces between letters. And as such, each Jew possesses something of the Torah. And as per the calculations of Abraham's first real estate purchase for us in Israel, just as each Jew can be seen as possessing something of the Torah, each Jew can similarly be seen as possessing something of Israel. Just as the Torah is the eternal inheritance of the Jewish people, Israel is the eternal inheritance of the Jewish people. Equally, the property of every individual Jew. And so it has been from the very first moment of Jewish ownership of the Holy Land. The first plot of land obtained by the first Jew included a share for every Jewish soul. And thus, how poignant that Abraham thus made the first real estate transaction for the Jewish people in of Israel as he purchased the cave and field of Machpelah in Hebron of 600,000 cubits. Enough room for each of the 600,000 to stand. And thus, back to my initial question. Yes, a part of Israel is yours. And I will leave you with that to ponder as I wish you Shabbat Shabbat.